It's Friday, September 21st, 2012, and let's make this a quick recap of what happened this week over at xdadevelopers.com, because I am suffering from a bit of a migraine. <laughs> First off, one bit of update news. The Samsung Galaxy Note has received another unofficial port of Jelly Bean by way of a user making paranoid Android work on the GT N7000. What's important to remember is it's not a port, it's actually built from source specifically for the device. And the cool thing about it, it allows you to change the DPI for specific applications to make them look different, look better on larger screens. So if you have an application that is specifically designed for a phone and it looks terrible because it was designed for a four inch phone and you're using a five and a half inch device, you can change the DPI and make it fit the screen better, make it fill the screen, make the elements flow a little differently, or potentially make it even use the tablet interface if there is one. Additionally, this ROM comes with Project Lard, which are the jelly bean drivers that have been implemented to work on Samsung devices and give them that smooth, buttery, flowy feeling. Also talking about the GT N7000, XDA recognized developer EVA stumbled upon the service manual and the schematics for that device. Not the complete ones, but it is definitely enough to get a start. You can get some useful information out of it, like boot pins and modes for the processor and the bootloader, probably a lot of other stuff that I just don't quite know about, but if you want to know more about it, head on over to the forum and take a look. Now actually, in a bit of update news that I kind of missed there, we do kind of focus heavily on Android on this forum and on this website, However, we do like to talk about Windows Phone on occasion. And this week, XDA recognized developer .comp made a Windows Phone 7.8 port for the HTC HD7. It's still considered a beta, kind of early, and it's not completely unlocked, so like homebrew apps will probably not work on it. But those people that are just jonging for the latest and greatest version of Windows Phone will probably not care about that so much and just want to jump on it. Now in other news, I've been pinged quite a few times since I've started making these videos about the Samsung Galaxy Y and trying to find out ways to to hack it and to root it and to put new stuff on it and all sorts of fun stuff like that. And the problem kind of stems around the Broadcom CPU-GPU combo and the drivers that are proprietary and closed. Well, there's been a lot of petitions put forth, a lot of requests put forth in the past about it. But lately, some XDA forum members led by RB Law have gotten in contact with somebody at Broadcom and actually got a response. Nick Lamburn from Broadcom's Android porting department has offered to do an open forum where you can ask questions to try to figure out where the community stands, what exactly they want, and what Broadcom can do to try to fix the situation. That's not saying they're going to open source everything, that's not saying they're going to open source anything, but at least it is a developer from Broadcom talking to the community and offering to do something. So uh, they're a little bit thumbs up to Broadcom. But don't keep those thumbs up for too long. Amazon unveiled the Kindle Fire HD family last week, I think. Well, one of the things that really came out of that is the locked downedness of that family. Essentially, Amazon's engineers put it out there that it was going to be unhackable. It was going to be impossible to break into. And from what I understand, the original Kindle Fire was kind of tough to get into, but it, of course, did happen. But the really funny thing about it is it's completely unhackable, right? It's impossible to get into. Yeah, somebody already got into it. <laughs> XDA recognized contributor Sparky M3 came to a realization that an ice cream sandwich vulnerability, specifically for the E Transformer Prime from Asus, would also work on the Kindle Fire HD7. So apparently, when these Amazon engineers were pulling down the code from AOSP to make their own builds, they kind of stopped at one point and they missed this very critical patch that was submitted to fix this exploit. And oops. Yeah, now there's a root available for the HD7. If you have the device, or if you're going to get the device and you want to root it, the link to the APK can be found inside of the forum thread, which of course will be linked to down in the video description. And the last couple of things to mention, just a little bit of XDA specific news. If you haven't seen it already, on Tuesday of this week, Lance put out a video updating his How to Build a Windows App series. This one specifically is talking all about OAuth and JSON, so all of the authentication back and forth techniques with the server. TK put out an app review on Wednesday talking about protecting your device with Hidden Eye. And that's essentially an app that if someone puts the wrong password into your device too many times, it will take a picture of them. It's things like that. Very cool, very interesting app if you've got a potential of somebody stealing your device. And finally, on Thursday, Azrianok put out a video all about the iPhone 5. An interesting choice of topic, but very appropriate given the timing. Talking about what its release says about Apple's strategy and how just because it has a bigger screen doesn't mean they're copying Android. It's just the obvious tone of the market. It's where things are going. It, it's a lot of good points, a lot of good information, so I do recommend watching that. And of course, make sure to watch the other videos that were put out this week as well. They are all good videos. But that's going to be about all for me for today. I'm going to take some pills and go to bed. Thank you so much for watching as always, and I will see you on Monday.